Hi, I'm Phil Plisky. I'm here with Kyle Kiesel and we're going to discuss today the best practices with regard to discharge decision making and return to activity testing. Thanks Phil. I want to start with a little personal experience and what we've learned over the years of now what we feel is, is appropriate testing near discharge for outpatient physical therapy and rehabilitation. Uh, I've been involved, been lucky to be involved with a lot of test development and screening development over the years that we use primarily for prevention. So we use tests to determine risk and help prevent injuries. And as I work through my rehab models and we all work hard to rehab our patients and get them back, I just assumed that they would pass the test. And what we found over time when we really started to test these folks prior to discharge is they really weren't passing the test like we thought. So through our personal experience and our substantial mistake, what we've learned is through the rehab process, we need to start these functional measurable tests early on and trust them and be sure that we're preparing our athletes and patients for proper discharge. That's the interesting thing. As we look at the research with regard to how patients are actually doing, I, you know, I think I'm doing a great job with my patients. They tell me they're feeling better, their disability scores are better, but the research might tell us a little bit different story. A systematic review in the British Journal of Sports Medicine looked at patients with ACL reconstruction and found that only 63% returned to a level of activity that was equal to their pre-injury level. So they're not getting back to the level that they were before. Interestingly enough, only 44% of those folks uh, actually returned to competitive sports. You combine that with the 30% plus retear rate of either the ipsilateral or contralateral ACL, maybe we're not doing as good a job as we think we are. And the interesting thing is 90% of those folks actually have normal strength and normal disability scores. So while the isolated impairments are normalizing, they're really not getting back to activity. And this is still apparent two years later. A study by Paterno and, and his colleagues found that jump landing remains changed two years after ACL reconstruction. And that is something that we can do something about. That is modifiable. That is you know, what we really need to work on. Lest we think this is only applicable to athletes and high level people, the same is true for patients with total knee replacement. A year after total knee replacement, when isokinetic strength and range of motion have fully normalized, the sit to stand transfer movement, one of the most basic movements, is still abnormal. The movement patterns are still dysfunctional.